Here in Georgia, there are two primary invasive species that can have an impact on, on deer populations. Uh, those would be the feral hog, which is not native to North America, and the coyote, which is native or indigenous to the plains in Western America, but not the Southeast. Both of these species have an impact on, on white-tailed deer from, from a couple different viewpoints. Uh, so it's hard to say which one is the biggest threat. Um, when it comes to habitat, it, the feral hawk would be the, big, would be the biggest threat because it's directly competing with white-tailed deer for the available food resources, not to mention that the, white, the feral hog um, has an incredible appetite and, it, and will consume anything. So when it's consuming the acorns and, and the other plants, it's also impacting the regeneration of that forest. The next stand that's coming along in our, either our child's adulthood or our grandchildren's lifetime. Um, basically, the feral hog is an invasive biological vacuum with little to no ecological attributes. Um, on the other hand, the coyote impact is through direct predation, largely affecting the, the white-tailed deer's fawn crop. Uh, you know, that, that next generation or that next cohort of white-tailed deer that are coming forth. Um, the coyote in the spring uh, can seek out and find white-tailed deer fawns and it can make a, become a pretty large part of that coyote's diet. But this is not necessarily a uniform statewide issue. Um, research that we've been doing recently here in Georgia seem to indicate that you can have two properties that are five, seven miles apart, but yet the impact of the coyote on the deer population on those two properties is vastly different. A large, strong impact on one population, but a, almost a negligible impact on the other population. So in some areas of the state, it may be an issue, in other areas of the state, it's not. And then even within a county on some properties, it might be an issue on some properties, it might not. So that's something that each and every landowner or, or deer manager needs to determine on the properties that they hunt. In Georgia, we scientifically obtain annual estimates of deer harvest every year. And with respect to feral hogs and coyotes over the last few years, we've not seen any Im significant impact on the, on the deer harvest in the state. Um, on the other hand, we have heard um, a lot of our hunters complaining about the number of deer they see is not the same number that they've seen in the past years or five years ago. So it's clear that in some areas of the state, the coyotes have, certainly must be having an impact. But again, it's, it's not a statewide issue. It seems to be a very uh, locally diverse or regionally diverse issue. As far as um, you know, what can be done to address you know, feral hog and, and coyote issues, um, those tools we really already have in the bag. They're, you know, predator management is a part of wildlife management. Those species need to be managed as well. And with respect to coyotes in Georgia, they can be hunted 365 days a year, not to mention the extra day you get in a leap year. Um, they can be hunted 24 hours a day. They can be hunted at night with a light. Um, they're not listed as a game species, so they can be taken over bait. Um, basically, hunters and landowners have the maximum amount of flexibility from a regulatory standpoint that they can possibly have in the state of Georgia to manage the coyote population. And the same is pretty much true for the feral hogs. Um, uh, although there are some issues with feral hogs and, and, um, and hunting at night, but uh, folks can get a special permit that allows them to do that. Um, here in Georgia, feral hogs, again, are not a game species, and they may be taken over bait at any time in the year. You know, I think a lot of hunters look at fall and winter, that's the hunting period, and, and they get very focused, particularly on, on big games such as deer. And, uh, you know, and then when deer season's out, well, that's it. You know, time to put the hunting clothes up and put the guns back in the cabinet. But, but it's not over yet. Your hunting season hasn't ended. Maybe the fall and winter part has, but once spring comes around, turkey season's out, we've got the rest of spring and all through summer that you can uh, still take that gun You've, and, and go out, hunt the feral hogs and hunt the coyotes. 
um, to uh, you know control or manage those species as well. And in particular with hogs, uh, don't miss an opportunity. Even though I know you're sitting on the deer stand, you're waiting for the big mossy horn buck to come by, and he's expecting to show up at any minute, and you have a herd of feral hogs move in. Take every opportunity you can to remove every single one of those that you can get a shot at. Um, if not, then you're passing up an opportunity you may not get again later, and it's an opportunity to improve the, that habitat and improve the opportunities for the white-tailed deer, the turkey, and the other wildlife species. There's um, benefits to, to the hunter as, as well. Um, we typically, you know, we like to fill the freezer with the deer meat, venison meat, elk, wherever it may come from. But, uh, you know, feral hog represents the green pork, so to speak. It's, you know, it's God raised that animal. It wasn't raised on a farm. It's eaten the natural native vegetation. So that meat is certainly gonna be of very high quality and, and gonna be a, a green meat probably about as organic as it gets. And uh, it definitely provides some additional uh, meat that you can place in the freezer to provide a little bit variety to the menu or the meals that you may be feeding your family and friends. You know, after one or two, your freezer's pretty full. And so you may, well, I don't, I don't need another one. Well, you may not need another one, but there are a lot more feral hogs that do need to be taken off the landscape and removed. Um, but let's not forget that there are uh, those people in our communities who, who are less fortunate than us. They may not get a, a meat meal, but maybe once a week. Seek an opportunity either through your church or local food bank to uh, you know, find out who these needy families are. And, and those extra uh, feral hogs that you shoot, that meat can be ground up and provided to these families and so that they can have a protein type meal almost every day of the week. With respect to coyotes, um, a lot of hunters, you know, they'll, they'll shoot them when they see them on the deer stand, but that one or two that you're getting during the winter is is not gonna have a beneficial impact on the white-tailed deer herd when the fawning season comes around and through next summer. Um, as they say, mother nature hates a void. And when you remove that coyote, there's another one standing on the periphery to move in and fill that empty space. Um, so with respect to coyotes, any shooting that you need to do and, and actually need to be doing trapping too because trapping is actually more effective than shooting, um, that needs to occur during the spring fawning season. Just a couple weeks before the deer are going to start dropping their fawns, through that period when they drop their fawns, and at least for a week or two thereafter, to give those fawns the opportunity to hit the ground, get their legs up on her, and, and obtain the skills necessary to evade predation. What kind of an impact are the coyotes having? The studies that have been done in the southeast recently have indicated that anywhere from um, up to 60 to 80 percent um, predation on fawns. Well, that's, that can be pretty substantial. Um, and in some of the, in the research that we've been doing here in Georgia as well as other places show that an effective trapping removal of coyotes prior to and during the fawning season will allow that your, what's called your recruitment rate, the number of fawns that survive and are recruited back into the population in the fall will actually increase and in some cases can double from having been maybe suppressed to a 0.4 fawns per doe. You put the trapping in, remove the coyotes during that prime fawning period and that recruitment rate jumps to, to 0.8 fawns or one fawn per doe, which is substantial improvement. So in the state of Georgia, the landowners and hunters have incredible flexibility to use in trying to manage those two species on their property and hopefully provide some improved benefits to the deer herd that they're trying to manage as well.